Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today, an art journal tutorial. And I'm really excited because in the completion of this page, I rediscover a technique that I rarely have used and I'm loving it. And I'm also using a brand new technique, stamping with gel medium. So I'm starting on this page that I have broken by block and blend. We've got lime green and blue. And I'm flipping through my cards and I see the card says use the smooshing technique. Now smooshing is something that you often see with distressed inks, but you can also do it with acrylic paint. So what I'm doing is just putting some dark blue, dark Prussian blue on my glass tabletop spritzing it with water and I'm just going to press the page onto it. Now the paint was a little thick so I need to water it down so I'm spraying it with water pressing down again and again. Now this is giving a really organic feel to the page and I chose the dark blue because I thought that would give a great contrast. Now this kind of technique is very organic and you can't don't have a whole lot of control and you just keep going till you like what you see and when you like a certain part of it you can get out the heat tool and let it dry and then smoosh again and I, that's what you see me doing here i'm just laying it down bits and pieces pressing it every time now you could be adding different colors i opted to keep the one color this has got a little thick here so i'm spritzing it and I'm going to keep pressing it again till I see what I like. Now, the benefit of this over any of using distress inks is this is permanent. Once this is dry, it's acrylic paint and it will stay put no matter what you're putting on it afterwards. I love the look of this background with the smooshing on it. So I will definitely remember to smoosh technical term i'm sure on other pages to get that kind of patterning we forget that we can use stamps and stencils to put pattern on the page but we can also do these kind of techniques and so having my technique cards there and flipping through it was a great way of, you know, just helping me decide what do I want to do next. Now, if you, if you don't have a glass tabletop, this will work on your craft mat or whatever you're using on it. And this is just acrylic paint that has been watered down. You get that dendritic kind of patterning. It spreads, and you, you. But you have to be willing when you're using this kind of technique to not be so precise, because it is not precise. And I, I mean, I think when you use it again and again, you're going to learn ways that you can somehow control it. So of course we're not wasting any paint here. So I grab a coffee filter. I water down all the leftover paint that's on my tabletop and I'm just cleaning it up. And now I have a colored coffee filter, which I will do some stamping or stenciling on and it will go into my file folder and be used on another art journal page. So what you're looking at here are two of the Tracy Scott stamp sets. And I love these stamp sets and some of others, some of others of Tracy's because you can take the components and do different things. Here I made a butterfly with it. Here I just used the flower one in several different ways and several different sizes. Here I made a flower using several of the components stamped onto gel prints or collage papers. And today I'm going to use gel medium with the stamps. Now this is gel medium gloss. And if, if you have gloss, I would recommend you using it. If you don't, you can, you, I'm sure it will work with the matte finish. So I'm stamping into the gel medium, which I've spread on my tabletop, and then I'm stamping onto plain copy paper. 
Now it's really hard for you to see, but this is leaving a texturized print. Now my theory here was that the gel medium, especially the gloss, is going to act as a resist when I put paint on here. This page is just raw paper. I have not, I've not put a coat of gesso on it. It's just raw paper. Now the kind of stamp that you use, you're gonna to have to play around a little bit with it. You want kind of bigger open spaces, nothing that's too intricate or fine. I just grabbed a different one from that same set. My goal here is to make embellishments that I can use to either build something on my page or just to add to the decoration on the page. So the gel medium is 3D and it will, or my theory was, act as a resist. So I made sure that that was completely dry. Now please make sure you go and clean your stamps. You do not want the gel medium to dry in your stamps. I sprayed it with Murphy's oil soap and I got like a nail brush out and I scrubbed it. So I'm using the palette that came with my water tub and I'm putting light blue permanent and yellow green, wetting it down and then I'm just applying it with a brush. Now it's gonna soak into the paper because that's raw paper. I want this kind of blend. I want it to be more on the green side. Now, later on, I do this again because I actually decide not to use the green blue one because I get a different idea, but I use a, ba uh, or a, a makeup sponge to spread the paint on there and it goes quicker and easier and I'm just rubbing it in. And I don't want this to be all one tone. This gives a very watercolory look, which I love. And I think this would be great if you stamped onto watercolor paper. Now, if you use watercolors, you can totally do that same thing and use watercolors, but that will reactivate if when you're gluing it down or putting any wet medium on it. So you know me, I like things to be permanent. I don't like to make it too complicated for myself. Now, when you take the baby wipe afterwards, the paint lifts off the gel medium, leaving the white. Now, you can go back and you can alter the color, tweak the colors a little bit, and you can continue to just pull it back as much or as little as you want. I love, love, love this look. And I can see getting out the gel medium, getting a tub of water, picking out some stamps, stamping a whole bunch of different patterns, different things that I can use for embellishments that can go in my stash. So again, the paper gets very wet because it's raw paper. You're gonna want to give this a dry and then you're just going to cut it out. So you have embellishments that you can create with, you can use as focal images, depending on the stamp. So here I'm just cutting this out. And I'm throwing it on the paper because I'm kind of thinking, I wasn't sure where I was going with this right now. Here, because it has this blue and green, I'm sticking to colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Anagalus colors. And I'm just very lazily fussy cutting. So I spend all the time cutting everything else out. And there we have all of them. And typically when I do it, I get more. Then I colored the other ones. Now I'm playing with, okay, what am I going to do with it? I had this vintage printable, free domain printable. And I thought, you know, I want these birds to stand out a little bit more. What if I put the this motif behind them? And I'm playing with both things that I stamped out and colored. And I'm thinking, okay, which one looks better? And I like the one with the scalloped edge. But as I'm laying this out, I'm liking it 
but I'm not completely sold with here's what I'm going to do. And quite often that's part of the process. But this way, the, the birds, they're standing out a little more from the background. And the, you get that smooshing technique really made kind of a soft, cloudy finish. Now, I'm thinking I know what I'm going to do here. So I grab this, I think it's called English Decoration Stamp. And I put it on a piece of plexiglass that came from a frame. And using that as a acrylic block. And I'm using a brayer to brayer on the white acrylic paint. This stamp is, is it's a cheap stamp and it's fairly, you know, it's very thin. And I've always had trouble getting a good stamp with it. But this worked well. To get that paint on using the brayer really was extremely helpful. And I'm stamping on here. And I chose to do white because I have that white in the embellishment I made from the gel medium. Then I grab this piece of shelf liner in black acrylic paint and I'm stamping with it. Remember, you don't have to pay a huge amount of money to have mark making tools. Shelf liners, sink liners make wonderful mark making tools. So I added some black. So we've got some black, some white, some interest in the background, that lovely smooshing pattern. Now I'm just edging this with black acrylic paint. And the reason I'm doing this now is because I have black acrylic paint. I'm using the corner punch to punch the round the corners here. I love that corner punch and I've, yeah, you, I'm just obsessed with it. I think it's We Are Memory Makers brand. It's got three different options and just cuts so well. So now that I have finished the patterning in the background, I'm repositioning these, the embellishments that I made with the gel medium. And it occurs to me that they kind of look like flowers behind them. But if they're flowers, I don't really know any flowers that are that kind of color. So I do some more stamping with the gel medium. And I choose to go to a complementary color scheme, kind of a coral color. I'm mixing quinacridone magenta and Naples yellow. And here I'm putting on it with a makeup sponge. You'll see the other flower, kind of the star flower there. That stamp, while it works, and I'm gonna use what I've made, it was very fine and intricate, and you don't see a lot of color in it. So there you can see a, a stamp that works for this technique and a stamp that is a little less successful with this technique. And here I'm just using the baby wipe to get rid of the color. And again, that gel medium is acting as a resist. So now I'm auditioning, do I want the pink ones? Do I want the green ones? I took pictures, I sent them to friends, I asked their opinion, it was split 50-50. <laughs> and in the end, I thought, you know, springtime, on Vancouver Island, the cherry blossoms are just about to start. I think maybe they have started in some parts of the city. So I decided I'm going to use this because it, it just makes me feel like it's a cherry blossom. And then I found the sentiment, if you want to fly, give up everything that holds you down. And with our journaling, sometimes that's what we have to do. We have to let go of what we think we know and try something new.
Now that I've played with the composition yet one more time, I'm going to glue everything down and I grab my TCW gel medium. This is just matte because I don't want it to shine where I put the glue, where I put it, right? Where I put the adhesive. Making sure the positioning's there. You glue down what is underneath all of it first. So I'm really anxious to go through my stamps a little bit more and pick out other stamps that I can use as embellishments and use this technique and build up my stash. And I'm pretty sure there will be a stash builder video showing you the variations that I can come up with because that's just the way I roll. If you Google free printable bluebirds, you will in all likelihood find this print and could print it off for yourself. So I have some Prussian blue and I am just going to do a wash of color. I'm adding a little bit more blue on those birds. Just, I want them to be forward. I want them to be front and center. So I want to brighten those colors just a smidge. So I'm looking at where they have it and just adding a wash of color. Now, this is coated with matte medium. If you want, you can coat it with clear gesso and that will prepare it to take the paint a little bit better. It also seals the paper. So if you put it somewhere and you don't like what you do, you can take a baby wipe and get rid of it very easily. With the shading, I'm now going to add some black. And then I will be doing some highlights with some white as well. I'm using my angle brush to do this. And it's a very lazy floating acrylic technique here. But I, again, I want those birds to stand out. So I want to give them shadows and shading. And then I'm shading around the flowers as well using the floating acrylic technique because the flowers, that's part of the focal image as well. Let me know in the comments if you've used the technique, if you use smooshing a lot, or if you use the technique of stamping with gel medium. And I'll put a link to the gel medium, the gloss, the TCW gel medium. And I don't, I'll put the name of the stamps, but I don't believe there's any links. Um, I don't think that it was available on Amazon or at any of my affiliates, so. Now I'm just adding a little bit of the floating acrylic around the edges just to soften it. I know I put the black there earlier with the makeup sponge when I had the black paint out, but I like this look just a little softer. And now I'm going to come and add some highlights. I'm just using white acrylic paint here and just 
adding those highlights. You can see this adding those highlights made a big difference. It just set the birds off, I think. When you're starting and you're doing floating acrylic technique or shading, you know, you get better as you practice. So practice. Just adding a little more highlights on here, adding a little more white. Just a personal choice. This is one of the last break the blank page pages from that series. I will put a link to that whole series and the initial video where I broke 20 some odd pages in a variety of ways. I've really enjoyed creating on those pages. I grab my Secura glaze pen in black and I'm just outlining the sentiment. And if you make a mistake, you can always erase it with a baby wipe and then come back. Just let it dry in between. Dotting the eyes of the birds. And now for the recap. I'm loving this page, how it came together. I love that I tried new things and I will continue to use those techniques. So this started off with a page that was broken with the block and blend technique. I used the smooshing technique next using Prussian blue on my glass tabletop. Love that smoky, that I did some stamping with white acrylic paint and stamping with black acrylic paint in my DIY shelf liner stamp. Then I made some of these embellishments using gel medium, gloss, right here, and stamp it using stamps, and then colorizing them. I use the vintage printable, the birds, the blue birds. Then I added a wash of color to brighten the colors. Then I sh shaded and highlighted the birds and the flowers. And then I added the sentiment and edged the page. Thank you so much for joining me. Give me a thumbs up, share this video and my channel with your creative friends. Come join my Facebook group and follow me on Instagram at Creative Katie. Until next time, go get creative.